So I'm using JavaScript events to do this simple to-do list editor, which we're going to build today. I can change it to apple, or I can change it to watermelon. There we go. And so that's basically my to-do list editor. And so that's what we're going to build in this. So if you remember from the prior lesson, you can actually do selectors. Uh, let me kind of show you what this app is going to be. Let me show you the HTML and kind of what I'm envisioning here. So basically I have a UL with three LIs in it. Those are their three LIs. Each LI has a span and an input. So the span is what I see when I'm not in edit mode. The input is going to be what I want to see when I'm in edit mode. So kind of the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to add a class edit here. And when class edit is on, let me save this a live reload. When class edit is on, the span goes away, the input gets shown. So all I have to do to change edit mode is add that class or remove that class. Okay, very simple, seems easy enough. Uh, so how I did that with CSS is my LI input by de default is a display none. So this guy is always hidden by default. And then when you have a class edit, the span goes to display none. And then class edit, the input gets display initial. So now the input is shown. When edit is on, span goes away, input gets hidden. So three simple CSS rules and I have the functionality for that. So now on JavaScript, when I click on an LI, I want to add the edit class. So now I'm in edit mode. I type in my input. And when I blur my input, whenever I leave, um, or whenever I hit the enter key, so that's be something I add to. Whenever I leave or hit the enter key, then I want to update this with my value that I changed. And then I want to remove my edit class. So that's kind of my program. Let's go ahead and write it. Um, you'll actually see it's pretty simple. So let's go ahead and first get our checklist, our checklist UL right here. So that's ID checklist. So we're going to go checklist equals documents. Um, get element by ID. There we go. So I've got the checklist. Now let's go ahead and get all the items within the checklist now. So one cool thing is I can actually search within my checklist for all my items. So I can go instead of document, I don't want to search my entire document. I just want to search within my checklist for all the items. So checklist.query selector all. I can do query selector all because it's going to be very fast. There's only a few items within my checklist to begin with. Um, and so I don't, I'm not worried at all about speed or performance with using query selector all. So there I have all my items right now. So this is going to be an array. Let me go console log it. So this is going to be an array of three LIs. We've got that LI, that LI, and that LI. So we want to loop through this array and then we want to add a listener to each item in the array. So if you remember from a few lessons ago, let's do a for loop here. So there I equals zero, I items dot length. So we're going to start off at zero. And as long as I is less than items length, we're going to keep increasing I. So now I can go items. And once again, these for loops are weird. You just got to code them and code them and code them and write them and write them and write them until you just finally get it and remember and have it memorized because it just it's not very natural this is one of the parts of programming that does feel like actual code because it's not English so it's okay if that seems annoying to you for a while at first um, so now for each item we're going to add an event listener um, and let's do a click events and then this right here if we do a function here that's not a very good idea because now it's going to every time we loop run through this loop for each item, it's going to create a new function to do the same thing. Uh, so we don't want to do that. Let's just go ahead and do edit item. Let's just actually make a function called edit item. So we've only created one function that's living in memory down here. And then it's going to run that function on any one of these items click events. So this is better programming right here than adding a function in there. You can do it. It'll probably work just fine. But this is better programming to pull your function out and then add your event listener to that function. So basically, whenever we click, we want to edit this item. So let's go ahead and console log. I'm going to console log this, which might seem like a funny word. But basically, since any one of our items can trigger this function, we need a way of knowing which item was clicked. And that's the this. This is whichever item had the event listener attached to it. So if I were to click on this, which is item one, or item zero, then this will be item zero. Let me just show you in practice here. So I'm console logging this every time there's a click. 
There we go. So I clicked on apples and there you go. This is the LI containing apples. So if I were to click on this, if I were to click on the second LI, then the value of this is now the oranges LI. If I were to click on the third LI, the value of this would be the bananas LI. So that's what this is. It's the context uh, that this function is running in. So now I can actually edit whichever one got clicked. So I could go if this dot class name uh, does not equal edit. Uh, actually, you know, I'm just going to say this dot class name equals edit. I was gonna I was gonna have it be edit if it didn't equal my own. It always needs to be edit no matter what. So even if it was edit before we click on it now, it's going to be edit. So there we go. Now it's working, sort of. Uh, it never goes away, but it's working. Step one complete. When you click on it, it goes into edit mode. So now what we want to do is uh, let's do a little bit more. I think, let me go to refresh this. I also want to focus on this input box, which is really simple to do. This dot focus. Actually, uh, I want to get the input inside of it. So as you see, I've clicked on this LI. Um, and so that is the value of this right here. But I want to get the input, and I want to focus on the input. And you know what? I also want to select all the text inside of it. So that's pretty simple, really. Just go very input equals this dot query selector all. Actually, just query selector. So I'm going to get the input inside of my li, and then I'm just going to go input dot focus. So there we go. Let's refresh this. When I click, hey, now I have that nice little focus bar around my input box. And then let's also get a selection range. Set selection range. So we're going to start at zero, and we're just going to go input.value.length. So basically, the whole length of whatever our current value is, we're going to select from zero, which is here, all the way to the full length of our text. Because uh, what the input.value is, is that's our current value of our input. Let me show you here. I'm going to console log my current value is, and then input.value. So I'm going to, when I click, there you go, my current value is apples. My current value is oranges. So that's what that input value is. An input value.length is how many letters I current ha currently have on there. Uh, so let me just change this to length. So there we go. Six characters in apples, right? A-P-P-L-E-S. Yep, six. Oranges, O-R-A-N-G-E-S. Yep, so seven characters in that. And so that's what that length is. So I'm going to create a selection from zero to the full length. I know that's kind of confusing. It's probably too much, but whatever. So there we have this nice little, when you click on it, it's, it focuses on it. You see my focus gets whichever one I clicked on. And then it selects the full text range. So that's pretty nice behavior. So now I can change it. Uh, let's change this to just Apple. And then I can leave. My value is changed, but I want to get out of edit mode. So let's go ahead and add a blur event listener now. Uh, but I don't actually want to add that blur event listener to the whole LI. I want to add the blur to the input. So let's go ahead and get, let me copy this. Let's get our inputs. So I'm going to query selector all input. So now this is the array of all the inputs inside of my checklist. So that's that. So as I'm looping through here, I'm going to also add a listener to every input. So now I'm going to go. I'm going to loop through my checklist length, 0, 1, 2, 3. And then I'm going to add a listener for item 0. I'm going to add a listener for input 0 as well. So this will be a blur on blur, not blue. On blur, I'm going to do an update item function. So now let's just console log and say we blurred. Make sure we're working that far. So I clicked. There we go. We blurred. And let me actually console log the value. This value. Apples. Let's say more apples. 
We blurred more apples. Okay, so that's how I'm going to get the value out. Um, and then very simply, I just want to apply this value. I've got my value on blur. I want to apply it to the span. I want to set the inner HTML of the span, which is my previous element sibling, which is the code for that. So I'm just going to go this.previous element sibling dot inner HTML. If you remember that from when I did that earlier equals dis dot value dis. So there we go. Now when I blur, I want to update that. So apples, I blurred. Of course, we didn't really realize that we were able to do that because what I also have to do is I have to go to my parent node, which is here, and I have to remove that edit class for it to go back out of edit mode. Dot class name equals nothing. So there we go. Our program should be working. More apples. Got it. I edited my span, took it out of edit mode, and we're good to go. Uh, so one more thing that let's do, let's go ahead and add an event listener for a key press. Uh, let's go item key press. So if I hit that enter key, I wanna do the exact same behavior. I wanna update that item the same way. So let's do our function key, item key press. So whenever the key press event is fired, we're gonna run item key press, which is this guy. Uh, and so one thing that this guy gets is he gets an event object every time it fires. Let's go ahead and console log that event object so you can see it. So I'm gonna go ahead and key press. I'm gonna hit an A key. Hey, there we go. That's a keyboard event. And you can see there's a whole bunch of information about what actually happened to that event. Um, and here's the important one for us. It's the which, event.which. It is the 97 key, which is the A key. Well, great, that doesn't help me out at all. Uh, so you can see B is the 98 key. Let's actually console log event.which. So you can kind of see what's going on here. A, B, C, D, E. 97, 98, 99, 100. Let's see what enter is. Enter is 13, 13. Uh, so there's no way on earth you're gonna memorize this. I always have to Google JavaScript key codes. I will give you this link as well in the description. Here's all your key codes. Um, enter is 13, enter is key 13. So usually I do one of two things. I either look up a key codes list or I do exactly what I did here. I just console log event which, and I figure out which key I actually am looking for. So in this case, I'm looking for the enter key. I hit enter a few times. Okay, that's 13. All right, 13 is what I want to respond to. So if, I know that feels like true programming to actually look up a key by number. If event which equals 13, then we're actually going to, we want to run update item, but we want to run it with this being the event that was clicked on, the this here. So we basically want to run update item, but we can't just run update item because then it won't know what this is. We actually have to run update item with this being the thing that got the key press of 13. So we do that by simply saying call. Update item call this. So now it's going to basically run update item and it's going to set this to be whatever I give it. So I could give it window or I could give it high. So now this would equal the string high, which of course would break because high has no parent node. There's no such thing as high dot previous element sibling. Uh, so that's going to break. But as long as I give it this, now my item which got the key press, which is my input, is going to be the this value when update item runs. I hope that makes sense. It's kind of a trickier concept. We're basically passing the value of this from my function on item key press to my function on update item. It's called changing the context. So let's see if this works. Apple, hit enter, boom, excellent. Let's change this to banana. Excellent, and then Apple again, enter, excellent, it works. So there's the program. I'm gonna go ahead and put this up, uh, probably on CodePen for you guys to play around with. Hope it helped you out. If it's too confusing and it's over your head, just play around with um, looking up a get element by ID and adding an event listener to it. Have some fun with that. 
then maybe mess with looping through arrays of things, uh, kind of more of these concepts that I'm doing here, and then calling something by passing context. That's a little of a trickier thing as well. So if that's over your head, that's totally understandable. Have a great day and hope you enjoyed the lesson.